Hello students, so this is Pratik Bhaseen back with your chapter 9th financial management of business studies for class 12th. In the previous session we had discussed about what is financial management, what is the role of financial management. We also discussed about the various types of financial decisions which were investment decision, financing decision and dividend decision. We also discussed about two types of investment decision which were investment into fixed assets and investment into current assets also known as working capital decision. We also discussed about the factors affecting capital budgeting decision. Then we discussed about the factors affecting requirement of working capital and fixed assets. In today's class we will be discussing about financing decision. These are the decisions which are related to sources of finance that is borrowed funds and owners funds and their relative proportion between themselves. These are ascertained on the basis of the return expected, cost and risk associated. Now we have two sources of finances which is owners fund which is known as equity and borrowed funds which is known as debt. Now let us understand the difference between equity and debt. So on the basis of type of capital equity is a part of owned capital whereas debt is a part of borrowed capital. Then we have on the basis of return. The dividends are expected on equity because it is a part of profit and the shareholders or equity holders are the owner of the company. Whereas the debt holders are a liability to the company and they are paid interest on it. Similarly, let us talk about voting rights. So equity shareholders have voting rights but debt holders have no voting rights with them. Then we talk about redemption. Equity shareholders are not redeemed during the lifetime of the company. They are redeemed only when the company is wound up. Then the redemption of debt holders take place at a fixed point of time. Whatever has been promised to them, the redemption will take place on that date or before that. Then we have cost. The dividend which is paid to the shareholders is the cost of equity shareholders. The cost is high because the risk associated with equity is also high. Then we have the cost paid to debts. So the cost paid to debts is interest which is low because the risk of the debt holder is very less. And also the interest paid to debt holder is a tax deductible expense. Then let us move ahead and discuss about capital structure. So it refers to the mix of different sources of long term funds such as equity shares, preference shares which are owners funds and the long term loans like debentures etc. These are a part of borrowed funds or debts. So capital structure can be expressed as a proportion between debt to equity or debt to total capital that is debt to equity plus debt. Now let us move ahead and discuss about financial risk. The risk of default on the payment of debt is known as financial risk. Higher use of debt increases the financial risk of a business. So it refers to the chances that a company would fail to repay its debt because debt is a burden. This is because interest paid on debt is a legal obligation. It is paid even if the company is not in profits. Similarly, debentures are to be redeemed after a specified period of time which requires outflow of cash. So if the company does not have cash, even then it will have to arrange for it. So when debt is a burden, why does company raises debt? You must have thought about this. Because debt is actually a cheaper source of finance. Similarly, the interest paid on debt is actually tax deductible. That means it leads to reduction of profits. Hence, there are some tax savings on it. Debt also does not lead to controlled dilution. This means that when you issue debt, you do not have to give voting rights to the debt holders. Whereas if you had issued equity, you would have to give the voting rights to the shareholders. Then we have a problem that is how are the shareholders of a company likely to gain with a debt component in the capital employed? Let us explain this with the help of example. So the concept which we will be discussing now is known as trading on equity. So trading on equity or financial leverage 
refers to the increase in the profit of the equity shareholders in the presence of debt by making equity as base. So, under this, when the return on capital employed is greater than the rate of interest which is paid to debt holders, the extra earnings that are earned goes into the pockets of the equity shareholders. So, if the earnings are stable and regular, the interest on debt can be paid and hence the company can earn more on that debt. This extra return can be used to increase the profit or the value of the equity shareholders. Now, let us move ahead and take a practical example for that. So, let us suppose a company wants to take a financial decision of investing rupees 30 lakhs. Now, the interest on debts that have been issued is 10 percent per annum. The tax rate is 30 percent and the earning before interest and tax is rupees 6 lakhs. Let us take three situations. The first situation says that there is no debt. The second situation says the debt used is to the amount of rupees 10 lakh. And the next situation says that the debt used would be till the amount of rupees 20 lakhs. Now, these three situations can be represented as follows. As the profit before interest and tax is 6 lakhs, it is same in all the three situations. Now, in the first situation, because no amount of debt was used, there is no interest. But in the second situation, we used debt of rupees 10 lakh. So, the interest paid on it will be 10 percent, that will be 1 lakh. Similarly, in third situation, we use the debt up to the tune of 20 lakhs and hence the interest paid on it is 2 lakh rupees. Now, we come on to the next step which calculates profit after interest. So, in the first situation, the profit after interest is 6 lakh rupees. In the second situation, it is 5 lakhs. In the third situation, it is 4 lakh rupees. Now, it is time to pay the taxes. Taxes are 30 percent. So, in the first situation, the tax will be 1 lakh 80 thousand which is 30 percent of 6 lakh rupees. Then, in the second situation, because the profit was 5 lakh rupees, because we had to pay the interest, so the tax would be paid up to the tune of 1 lakh 50 thousand rupees. So, in situation 2, there is a tax saving of rupees 30 thousand. This is because the profits in situation 2 were lesser than the profits in situation 1. This happened because of the interest component of rupees 1 lakh. Then, in situation 3, we have profits after interest equal to 4 lakh rupees and the taxes paid will be 1 lakh 20 thousand that is 30 percent of 4 lakh rupees. In this situation, tax saving is even more as compared to situation 2. So, we have saved around 60 thousand rupees of taxes as compared to situation 1. This is because the interest was rupees 2 lakh. So, we have saved around 30 percent of 2 lakh that is 60 thousand rupees. Now, we have profit after tax. So, in the first situation, the profit after tax is 4 lakh 20 thousand. In the second situation, the profit after tax is 3 lakh 50 thousand. And in the third situation, the profit after tax is 2 lakh 80 thousand. In the first case, because the entire amount was financed by equity shareholders, that means the entire 30 lakh rupees have been divided into shares of rupees 10 each, this means the number of shareholders will be 3 lakh. So, we are dividing the profit after tax of rupees 4 lakh 20 thousand into 3 lakh shareholders. This gives us an earning per share of rupees 1.4, that means 1 rupee 40 paisa. In the second case, the profit after tax was 3 lakh 50 thousand. This has been divided into 2 lakh shareholders. This is because the equity capital that was invested was 20 lakh as 10 lakh was financed by debt. So, the earning per share will be 1.75. Similarly, in the third situation, we have profit after interest and tax equal to 2 lakh 80 thousand. This has been divided into 1 lakh shareholders. This was because 20 lakh was financed by debt. In this case, the earning per share is 2 rupees 80 paisa. So, the optimal situation is situation 3. This is known as trading on equity. So, the third case should be desirable by the company. Now, let us move ahead and discuss about the factors that affect the choice of capital structure. So, the first factor of capital structure is flotation costs. These are the cost which the company incurs when the company makes a new issue of either stocks 
or debentures. It involves costs of printing the certificates, paying the underwriters, government fees, etc. So, issue of equity share involves high amount of flotation cost, whereas issue of debentures or taking a loan from a bank involves low amount of flotation cost. So, it depends upon the company that it wants to bear high flotation cost or low flotation cost. If it wants to incur high flotation cost, equity is better. Whereas, if a company wants to incur less amount of flotation cost, then debenture or a debt from the bank is better. The second factor is interest coverage ratio. It refers to the number of times the earnings of a company covers its interest obligation. The higher the ratio, the company will be in a better position in repaying its debt. The formula for interest coverage ratio is profit before interest and taxes upon the interest. Now, we have the next factor which is risk consideration. Debt increases the financial risk that is to meet the fixed interest payment and the repayment obligation the company will have to earn more this increases the risk for the company. If the risk is lower then the company can use debt but if the risk is already higher then the company should use equity to its advantage. Then we have the next factor which is the stock market conditions. During depression, people do not want to invest into shares or stocks of the companies. At this point of time, the companies should prefer debt because the risk in debt is less. So, the investors can easily invest into debt. But at the time of boom, the price of equity shares is soaring. So, everybody wants to take the advantage of the swing and hence they invest in the stocks of the company very easily. Now, let us move ahead the next point which affects the choice of capital structure is tax rate. A higher corporate tax rate forces the company to raise funds through debt because interest on debt is a tax deductible expense. This would decrease the taxable profit and hence lead to savings for the company. So, at the time where the tax rate is high, the company should prefer issuing debt. whereas if the tax rate is low, the company should prefer issuing equity. Then we have the next point which is situation of cash flow. That means what is the situation of cash flows in the company? If the company has stable sales and there is regular inflow of cash, it can easily raise debt because it can actually pay interest and repayment can be made easily with the cash flow with the company. But if the cash flow position is not good for the company, then we have the next point which is cost of debt. Cost of debt is the fixed interest charges that are to be paid at a recurring time period. So, if the rate of interest on debt is higher, debts can be avoided because it would lead to increase in the cost of the company or the expenses of the company and the profits will be less. And at this point of time, when the rate of debt is high, the company can issue equity. Now, let us move ahead. The next factor is the capital structure of other companies. So, debt equity ratio of other companies can also be seen. That is, companies which are in same industry may use the same amount of capital structure. So, this will help the company to be at par with the other companies. Now, let us move ahead and discuss about return on investment. So, if the return on investment is higher than the rate of interest, then the company can use debt and can practice trading on equity. This would increase the earning per share. So now, let us move ahead and discuss about the extent of control or the control dilution. If the company wants to retain control with itself, then it can issue debt. Because debt does not have voting power. But if the company chooses to issue equity, then there will be dilution of the control. So, Equity may be preferred only when the company is not concerned about the control dilution. So now, let us move ahead and discuss about the factors affecting financing decision. So, the first factor that affect the financing decision is the cash flow position of the business. As already discussed that if a company has stable sales and has regular inflows of cash, then it can raise debt 
because it can honor the fixed interest payment and the repayment obligation. Then the next factor is that affects the financing decision is the higher fixed operating cost. Cost of debt is actually a fixed interest payment charge. That means it has to be paid regularly at regular intervals. So it is actually a fixed cost for the company. So if the rate of interest is high, then debts can be avoided. Similarly, if the company is already incurring huge fixed expenses, then it should always avoid debt because debt adds to the fixed expenses of the company. Then the next point is the flotation cost. If the company wants to issue debt, then there are lesser flotation cost. Flotation cost as we have already discussed involves cost of printing the certificates, paying the underwriters, government fees, etc. Issue of equity share involves huge amount of flotation cost. So if the company has deep pockets and can incur flotation cost, then it may choose to issue equity. Whereas if the company's pockets are not so deep, then it must consider taking a loan from the bank because it involves no or very less flotation costs. Then we have the next point which is control dilution or extent of control. If a company knows that it wants to retain control, then it must always go for issuing debts because issuing debts do not involve control dilution. But whereas on the other hand, equity involves dilution of control. So equity may be issued when the company is not concerned about control dilution or a takeover threat. Then we have the next point that is the extent of risk. We know that debt increases the financial risk of the company. So financial risk refers to the risk that the company would fail to meet its repayment obligation or the interest payment obligation. So if the business risk of the organization is low, then it can choose to issue debt. Otherwise, it must choose to issue equity. Then we have the state of capital market. During depression, people are not willing to invest into the share market and hence they do not want to buy the stocks or shares of the companies. The stock prices actually go down and hence people prefer to invest into debt because the risk involved in debt is actually less because the fixed payment is received by debt. Similarly, during boom, people are willing to invest into equity shares of the companies even at higher prices. So the company must choose to issue equity shares at the time of boom. So in today's session, we have discussed about what is financing decision and what is capital structure. We also discussed the factors affecting financing and capital structure they were very much similar to each other because financing decision involves the decision relating to choice of debt or choice of equity. Whereas capital structure involves the decision relating to the proportion between debt and equity. Therefore, their factors were almost similar. I hope you were through with this part. I'll see you in the next session. Till then, please take care of yourselves.